are here to actually provide all the support to develop students to become a competent graduate that is needed by the industry. Please feel welcome to visit us to see how we do our transformation of students. Hi, good morning, everyone. So uh, thank you very much for joining our webinar session for today. So my name is Sabrina Samsudin, and uh, I will be your moderator for today. I'm from School of Hospitality and Tourism, Sagi College, Penang. So before uh, we begin our sessions, I will explain uh, a little bit of uh, the forum for today. So the session will be around one and a half hour. And uh, if, let's say, you have any questions uh, during the discussions, you can just uh, drop off your questions at the chat box and we will get back to you during the Q&A session later. Okay. And uh, most importantly, uh, hopefully that you can stay until the end of the session as uh, we will have this uh, QR code for your registration to get your e-certificate. Okay. So uh, let's start our discussions for today's. Okay, so uh, for today' topic, okay, uh, our forum will be discussed on the current situations and the further future of the hospitality and tourism industry as the global will hit by the pandemic COVID nineteen. So at the same time, we will get uh, the insights from the experts on the key issues which is uh, arising from the pandemics. So uh, to further discuss on these uh, topics. We are very honored to have our panelists for today's sessions. Okay, so first up, uh, I would like to introduce our uh, Dr. Johanuddin. Uh, Dr. Johanuddin is an associate professor from UITM Penang. So he has been uh, in the industry for over 30 years. Okay, so he worked in this uh, hospitality industry as well as uh, academic spans for more than 30 years. So we are very honored to have him to share uh, more, most of his insights uh, regarding our topics for today. And then uh, we have another panel, okay, is uh, Mr. Lokman. So he is the founder of uh, Shiba Travel and Tours. So Mr. Lokman as well, he have a very uh, huge experience for over 25 years of experience, especially in uh, human resource management and as well as uh, handling a uh, travel agencies, which is uh, Shiba Travel and Tours. Okay, and then last but not least, we have our third panel, which is uh, Mr. Lawrence. So Mr. Lawrence is a human resource manager from uh, Hompton Hotel by the beach, Penang. So Mr. Lawrence himself, he has more than uh, 37 years of experience in the industry. So uh, we hope that with uh, this uh, vast experience of our panelists, we can discuss into uh, much more further into our topics for today. So uh, we know that uh, the tourism industry is uh, the third biggest contributors for Malaysia's GDP after manufacturing and commodities. Right. So in recent years, uh, we could see that there were um, the increasing numbers of tourists okay, in our country itself. So however, recently, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, then we can see that uh, it has gave a very huge uh, impact on our industry as uh, there were negative growth of 68.2%, uh, okay, which is more than half. 
for the tourist arrival in the first half of 2020. So we can say that uh, because of this pandemic as well, it can be said our tourism and hospitality industry has suffered a lot and it has impacted uh, most of the practitioners uh, in the industry as well. So uh, I would like to uh, ask some of the insights from our experts for regarding these uh, matters for today. So we do have uh, several questions. Okay, let's look into our uh, first questions. Okay, so uh, are there any other impacts of COVID-19 that is more critical than what we are facing currently? Okay, and uh, since the pandemic has become much more serious, so does the government provide funding and support to the suppliers, because since there are no incoming tourists, like uh, based from the statistic that uh, we looked earlier, and then how does the tourism and hotel industry could survive through uh, the COVID-19 pandemic? So I think uh, I would like to ask the opinions from Mr. Lukman, since he was uh, he have uh, vast experience in the industry. So, Mr. Lokman, maybe you can share uh, your experience in handling uh, the travel agents' business uh, during these uh, crucial situations. Hi, uh, Ms. Sabrina, thank you very much for having me in this live session. Yes, welcome. Yes, uh, the situation is not, it's not good at all, I would say. So, <laughs> I think everyone knows that, uh, what you call this, since uh, March, or even earlier, uh, organizations uh, or players in the tourism industry uh, was alarmed by the prospect of uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Yeah? So when Malaysia started the PKP uh, middle of March, 18th of March, uh, that's when uh, people start to actually, everybody, yeah? literally everybody, every businesses start to get panic. Yeah? And uh, as for the tourism industry, it was actually a complete stop, almost a complete stop. Yeah? And then uh, from there on, you see a lot of uh, cancellations. Uh? Uh, so it runs into huge uh, financial impacts to the tourism players. So it affects uh, the transportation, yeah? in the industry, in the tourism, uh, airlines, uh, cruises, uh, rail, uh, bus, uh, persiaran, you know, um, ferries, that's baganya. So, and then when the, the bookings get cancelled, I think that's when the uh, place in the industry start to feel uh, the, the pinch of the economic impact, mm. yeah. And then uh, this has been going on for almost uh, how many months already? March until November. And that is actually, we are coming closer to the year end. Uh, I think the latest statistics as uh, presented by uh, YB Minister a couple of days ago, uh, we have seen like uh, 200 over business entities in the tourism. Uh, this is mm -hmm. the one that that are uh, uh, reported. Uh, uh, I mean, has been closed down, yeah, either by court order or voluntarily winding up. So these are the the the, the situation that is happening, uh, and this is actually critical enough already for for it cannot be, <laughs> yeah, it can be worse than this, but it's yeah. already critical enough uh, of what we are facing today, mm -hmm. yeah. And then uh, I think. Uh, there are travel agencies like us, uh, mm -hmm. severely affected. There are uh, transportation company, bus persiaran operators, uh, owners. I think they, they are also uh, looking for, still waiting for help, right? If it, the next question is uh, whether there is a, has been funding or support from the government. The answer is yes. Generally, okay. the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. uh, even the state government at the, the beginning of the uh, March, or to somewhere in March or April, started this uh, package Bantuan Rakyat Pulau Pinang, right? That's where mm -hmm. specifically for for the tourism industry, mm -hmm. the tour guides and the driver of uh, bus Pesiara, we get uh, one of uh, financial help. Mm -hmm. eh? And then also, I think via PDC uh, or state, eh? 
I think there was a Usawa Micro MPKS interest interest free loan. Eh? So the budget was actually about 30 million at that time. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, of course, at the early stage of PKP, there was an economic recovery plan. Specifically, the tour guides was actually benefiting from that one off payment. Then mm -hmm. we have uh, further on Prihatin initiative, uh, Penjana later on, then the latest one being the Kita Prihatin. So mm -hmm. these are the stages that the government had, had assistance uh, came in eh? but it's not only for for generally for specifically for the tourism industry but it's also for the businesses in general and mm -hmm. some are targeting for the smes eh? and there are smes are a large contributor to the Malaysian economy that's why i think the government the government is uh, focusing on the funding uh, for for the for the tourism uh, for the smes but mm -hmm. uh, i think the challenge for tourism players is that being the industry that is probably the most severely affected, uh, the financial institution is very, very reluctant to release the, the fund. I think for obvious reasons mm -hmm. uh, that um, the prospect of actually coming to, in the future, to be able to make the payments, eh? probably a suspect eh? <laughs> to, to, to yes. the, those who are releasing the loan. So, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, what else, uh, what are the choices that uh, the travel agencies, for example, have uh, in terms of funding? Eh? I mean, mm -hmm. this is basically, we, we are <clears throat> actually at the crossroads. Eh? <clears throat> mm -hmm. the, the, the fund is there, but uh, the financial institution, the banks are actually thinking uh, on the, very st still like the normal criteria of uh, releasing the funds. I think there are still huge amount of funds which is stuck with, with them and not dispersed. Huh? I think there are many applications that has been rejected. I think this is something that probably uh, been discussed at another forum. Right, yeah? So <laughs> I think uh, that the, you talk about the support for the general uh, businesses, yes. yeah. Uh, coming mm -hmm. from the tourism industry, uh, as you mentioned in the introduction, uh, yeah. the third GDP contributors, I think, uh, more specific and targeted uh, help. Mm -hmm. huh? uh, I think the, the latest one, we, we can see that the initiative launched uh, by the government to actually uh, revitalize, huh? and there was yes. a, uh, initiated by uh, the, announced by the, Ministry of Tourism, mm -hmm. uh, there was uh, a cooperation between uh, Malaysia of, Association of Hotels and the mm -hmm. market platform, eh? the Malaysia Budget Hotel Association, and then um, uh, with the airlines and also uh, I think the Prasarana, <coughs> and then the, some discount for craft products. Mm -hmm. eh? But again, uh, there are certain uh, still, uh, certain part of the uh, industries, uh, industry players in the tourism are still not uh, being uh, impacted by this latest initiative. Uh, the, the transporters, uh, travel mm -hmm. agency are still waiting. Probably, uh, we are being considered and will be coming up next. I think we still have probably a lot. Uh, we have to wait further on the government punya what you call this uh, initiative lah for, for specifically for travel agency or the transportation companies and those who have not get the uh, yet uh, in the initiative that have re has been announced so that that's uh for a start i guess to sabrina yes so i think that uh even though uh, maybe we uh, the government did provide some funding, but there are still there is some challenges, especially for travel agencies. As I, we, the tourists may have this uh, phobia in traveling. I guess. Okay, so again, yeah. uh, like what you have mentioned, uh, it could be a problem. So let's say uh, you, for agencies or practitioners, they may get the loans and so on. But then, if we do have a lack of tourists, uh, incoming numbers of tourists. Uh, there will be no rotations, I mean, uh, in terms of the mod, uh, money rotations and so on. So it will be uh, kind of burdens for these practitioners to pay back the loan, I guess. Right. And then um, 
aside of that, uh, I do agree that uh, Mr. Lokman has mentioned uh, government has came up with a plan, so specifically for the uh, tourism industry. So I've seen this in the news. So they has announced by ministry. So a lot of uh, tourism associations okay, uh, will be help each other or support each others in order to uh, recovering back on the tourism industry of uh, our countries. So I think uh, there is a funding and support. So uh, thank you, Mr. Lokman, for your uh, very good insights. Okay, maybe uh, we will have another panel yeah, or other panels want to share their insights on this related matter. Uh, how about Dr. Johan? Do you have any ideas on, on this particular part? Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Sabrina, for your uh, for the questions. Uh, I just would like to share some uh, of my, mm -hmm. uh, what I call, I don't know whether I can share this. Uh, Assalamualaikum, mm -hmm. salam sejahtera to everyone. Uh, I would like to share some of the, uh, some of my, my, my study, uh, research on this mm -hmm. uh, particular topics. Yeah. So, uh, all right here. Yeah. I don't know whether you can see this. Can you see this? Can you see the screen? Can you yeah. see the screen? Can you see the screen? I mean, I share the screen, the screen now. Uh, yes. Okay. All right. So. All right. Before I, I proceed with the uh, hold on. All right. So before I proceed with the uh, for the first questions. Okay. Now, so this is the overview of the first. Uh, I mean the. All right. Still. Up. All right. Now, so. Uh, this is the first slide that we would like to show you about the world coronavirus cases. Yeah. Because we need to see this thing from the macro level to the uh, macro level to the micro level. Okay, first, the world coronavirus, uh, coronavirus cases is more than about 59 million, I think approaching to 60 million. And the number of total dead is about 1.4 million. And total recovery is about 41 million. And this is the population of the world now at the moment is about 7.8 billion. Okay, if you see the dynamics of this uh, percentage, yeah. You see, it's about 0.76% from 7 billion people is actually got mm -hmm. infected by the, uh, by the coronavirus. And five most uh, countries that's actually uh, got infected by uh, COVID-19 is USA. Now, we are talking about 12 million, about 12.7 million. Uh, the population, about 331 million. So recently, they've got the uh, uh, Joe Biden is actually going to be the president. Uh, after the election and India is also got the most impact uh, affected by the pandemic and the third one Brazil and I would like to go straight to number 68 that is China this is where the, the pandemic uh, COVID-19 started uh, mm -hmm. they have recorded 86,464 and we are talking about 1.4 billion uh, population in China so from the statistic itself, we can see and we can have, uh, we can do some analysis saying that they have done a very good job in terms of how they, uh, I mean, uh, assist uh, the, 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 the people, the, the citizen in, of China. Mm -hmm. How are they going to, uh, how they, they help and they try to contain the, the virus and until today, they only have about 4,634 dead and uh, it represents about 0.0003% out of 1.4 billion. So meaning to say that there is something from the statistic that we can learn uh, from China. And the next one is number 83. Now we have around 58,847 uh, 58, as for last night. Yeah. It's about 0.8% out of 32 million got infected by the uh, coronavirus. And uh, the total date is about 341 and 44,000 uh, recovered. So as last night, we, we, we have seen the numbers have gone up to 2,000 plus uh, cases, uh, especially in, in the uh, Selangor area. So these numbers uh, is very important to look at. And... I do not know whether you can see what I see here uh, out of 7 billion, out of 7 billion, uh, the number of population in this world got infected is about 0.67%, mm -hmm. right? I do not, do not know whether you can see what I can see, but this is, the number is, is quite uh, important, 
Okay, next. I think you uh, let you uh, to, to to interpret this. Uh, I mean uh, the numbers. Okay, next is now uh, international tourists. Uh, January twenty twenty. Uh, 2020 January uh, to August uh, world is about uh, this is the uh, the current international tourist arrival this is from UNWTO uh, you can see from the we look at Asia the Asia and the Pacific it's about minus 79% in terms of the numbers of uh, tourists uh, decline yeah so this is quite serious when you have uh, minus 79% because <laughs> this is due to the the majority of the country they close their border yeah yes because exactly. uh, we are not mm -hmm. we not allowed people to go out and uh, to go in and what is actually can revive the economy is from my opinion for my first opinion is about how are we going to uh, enforce or how are we going to uh, increase the number of domestic uh, mm -hmm. domestic tourists at the moment we are undergoing this uh, pkvb PKPP now uh, PK some of the the places uh, they got like PKPD diperketatkan all this uh, EMCO mm -hmm. so this is also impede the numbers of domestic tourists as well okay now next is about when you look at the Southeast Asia economic data yeah this is some of the, my 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 research uh, on the GDP we are talking about 2.9 billion two, sorry 2.9 uh, 2.9 trillion uh, GDP from all the Southeast Asia, yeah? You're talking about the numbers about 668 uh, million, sorry, that is 668 uh, uh, on the population. And you're mm -hmm. talking about 2.9 trillion uh, GDP. This is quite big, yeah, for, 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 for Southeast Asia. So the numbers decreased by about, about 70% now at the moment. So people do not, uh, the tourists from international cannot mm -hmm. travel to, to Malaysia, to Thailand, whatsoever. So, next is this is the last uh, last year, but 2019. Yeah, the growth rate of production, uh, the hospitality. I, I have some it here. Services about 58.2 percent, uh, 216.2 billion. Uh, the this is the high performing industry, and as you see, uh, can you 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 can basically download from the uh, tourism uh, tourism website. You can get this. Uh, last year, two thousand nineteen, we we were talking about eighty six billion uh, ringgit uh, in terms of uh, in term income generation by the hospitality mm -hmm. and tourism. Yeah. So if you go in further, manufacturing is about twenty two point one percent. Construction is about four point five. Uh, mining mining and quarry quarry is about twenty six point four billion right okay now so this is uh, the, the the from the department of statistics malaysia we are talking about the revenue lo uh, loss yeah revenue loss on the highlight impact of COVID on tourism industry revenue loss is around 75.69 million during the mc is about 560.72 million and the average occupancy risk projected to all is about 11 percent break is about minus about 40 percent yeah employment's about 70 percent uh, pay cuts about nine percent and unpaid leaves about seventy percent. So this is from the, the the Malaysian Hotel Association, and of course definitely from the passenger transport. As we see, uh, you you have seen now, uh, mm -hmm. Malaysia Airlines, uh, Air Asia, Malindo, they have cut the numbers of employee and because of what? Because there's no demand for traveling, and this is also affect uh, affected the 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 uh, industry as well. Because mm -hmm. the people who work or people who travel is actually in stop. So, uh, in it's about faces an estimated of 33.32 billion loss in revenue. Yeah, that is includes uh, Malaysia Airlines, uh, Asia, and others. So, uh, retail trade. So, I would like to just go straight forward for the food and beverage travel agency as well. Travel agency face potential liability of around 500 million from customers seeking compensation regardless of can cancellation and refund policies of various service providers. So, Mata also. Project a total of 150 million in losses during the school holidays because of what? Because of the pandemic COVID-19. So travel agents also had potential about 100 million loss. So I think this is uh, uh, it's quite serious now at the moment. But mm -hmm. there are remedies for this problem. Okay, uh, game changer for tourism industry. Yeah. So uh, international tourists arose declined by 20, 20 to 30 percent. International tourism about received about lost about three. 100 to 450,000 US dollar, a billion. So it's uh, affect, 
affecting Indonesia, India, mm-hmm. Thailand. So this is uh, this is the the country that's always like uh, uh, the the visitors visitors are tourists from Indonesia, India, Thailand, and Europe. Yeah. Okay. Now next is uh, I think uh, for a while this that is my 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 uh, I mean opinion on what is actually going on uh, the current uh, situation in in Malaysia. So thank you very much. Uh, Yep. Okay, thank you very okay. much, Dr. Johan, for this uh, great sharing. So, with uh, the statistics, so we can see that it was a huge impact on the uh, COVID-19 pandemic has uh, hit our tourism industry itself. So maybe I will get some uh, insights from Mr. Lawrence as well. So, Mr. Lawrence has been in this uh, hospitality industry for quite a long time, a hotel industry. So, in the perspective of hotels or hoteliers, uh, does uh, the government funding and support, does it really uh, help uh, the hoteliers? May I have some sharing from Mr. Lawrence? Yeah, good morning, uh, Dr. Johan, uh, Mr. Roslan, Ms. Sabrina for having me at this webinar today. Uh, it's my pleasure uh, to, to be here. Now, uh, funding from the government, yes, the government are funding us, uh, especially on in terms of this penjana, uh, the government uh, penjana first, then penjana two. So these are mm-hmm. all the subsidies, salaries they are paying. So the first uh, three months you'll be paying eight hundred, then the second three months you're paying six hundred. So it, it, it helps, it helps. Okay, but again, a question will come. Okay, how long the government can fund us? Right. So it, it mm-hmm. all depends back on this COVID thing. Ah, uh, you, you, you the, the the thing is. No one will know when is a full stop there. Like the doc shared uh, the statistics. Uh, uh, when I see the unemployment there, 3.32% for Malaysia, <laughs> it's a bit, you know, quite scary. But the figure shows small. But of course, it is not healthy. Right? Personally, that's my opinion of view. Right? So, but but definitely, it'll, it'll be an end of it. Because I, we need to be positive. The day you know, the COVID is finished, the border is lifted, then you can see the tourism will rush in. So that's where we need to be ready to accept this tourism off. Right? So how are we going to be ready, this, this, uh, uh, our team players and my hotel associates? Right? We are currently we are doing a lot of online training and multitasking. So well, when you see online training, okay, I have a training exec, so he moves around. You know, to keep them on tow because I, you know, when the hotel we are hovering around seventy to sixty percent occupancy, suddenly mm-hmm. the occupancy is one percent, and then they don't see anybody. So how is the feel of the spirit? You know, they, they feel the morale is so low. So that's where you know, exactly. for practitioners, we need to go there mm-hmm. and put them up. Hey, this is like this. You know, do the training online. Keep them on the tow. So you know, at least they spend the time. You know, learning and get ready to equip themselves when the business picks up. Say multitasking, you see, when I'm talking about multitasking, this has been done before, but I think we, we forgot about it now. Because why? Right, when we go, uh, especially uh, being a front office, right? So front office, your JD speaks only, you check in and check out, yes, that's it only. But now we need to go beyond that, right? Extend our services, okay? Um, uh, like for instance, all right, maybe you know, after you checking in, so you can call them in the room. Is your room, so everything's ready, everything nice. So, what you like to have here for your dinner? You see, you are going out. So, if, let's say it's a birthday, you know, when there's an FMB there, so the front of it may go together up and sing a birthday song. This is something new norm, we call it. Mm-hmm. Right? So we need to adopt this in the industry now. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Lawrence. So I do agree with uh, what uh, has been shared by Mr. Lawrence. So this is a very uh, crucial. So it doesn't mean that the industry will stop because of the pandemic. Okay, uh, next we move on to our second questions. So the current outbreak seems to reduce quite a huge number of employees who had been working in this industry. So uh, will this situation be continuous? And uh, next one, we are aware that most of the people in the industry may have lost their job due to this pandemic. So in your opinion, what they can do to continue their development in the industry? So is there any plan in addressing these options? 
So maybe I'll go uh, with Mr. Lawrence in uh, answering these questions because uh, we can see that Mr. Lawrence have a very uh, uh, quite long journey uh, in a human resource management uh, field. So Mr. Lawrence, uh, what are your opinions on this? Yes, the first question, yes, but as I said earlier, it's the only temporary measurement only, uh, right? Mm -hmm. The every player has the positive. Uh, people need to move. People need to come out. They, they can't be, you know, NCO uh, for one month, one and a half month is good enough for us how we feel we are confined at home. So mm -hmm. then they lift it up, then comes the RNCO. Then we were enjoying, uh, in fact, the hoteliers were enjoying the business of RNCO because, right? Uh, people can travel from state to state. But CMCO mm -hmm. is a totally full stop. So that's where we are feel tight. Right? So we although border is not open yet. So there is business. So you know when there is business, students, you know, who are taking this tourism study don't have to be scared. Okay, don't mm -hmm. think there's no light in the tunnel. Yes, of course there is. Uh, so, but again, right, uh, no one can say it's when, right? So that's where we have to come out stronger. Now, losing job, right? Now, yes, uh, so far, so far on my knowledge in Penang, okay, in Penang, mm -hmm. uh, there are two, three hotels, three hotels, yes, three hotels were closed down. These are under mark. Okay, so but in terms of you know uh, retrenchment, so far I can say not much of uh, Penang hotel retrenchment. I don't want to touch about KL because I'm not sure. But Penang, we are still strong. Okay, so so there's not much of retrenchment. But again, my 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 advice to employees, okay, do not you know follow strictly on the employment act. You know, employment act is a guideline for us. Okay, so that's my opinion, right? But how we want to implement to certain uh, industries or certain organization, it uh, depends on the management. Meaning which, okay, the act says we need to work in a week, 48 hours, right? So we can be flexible on that. We cannot say, die, die, we must do 48 hours. We can do 40 hours for this week. So next week, we can do 48 you see, that's where the flexibility comes in. But again, only not only employees only. Employees also need to work hand in hand. As long as they have a job, that's the most important thing, right? So that's where, you know, we need to be very positive. And it's not easy, especially the management and the owners. Because the owners have to offer the money monthly. The, the fixed, the fixed the, uh, expenses is the salary. So this is where the huge cost, right? So, but again, right? We need to, you know, enhance the, the the employees, the training, or everything. So how we are going to, you know, address this uh, uh, development, right? Now, mm -hmm. certain hotels they come out with packages, right? Packages whereby those days you buy a room, that's it. If you want to buy breakfast, you need to add in no breakfast, no charge, anything. But now. They, 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 they're giving a package. You buy this, you get this value add. So these are the things a lot of hotels are doing. In fact, yes, exactly. uh, there are some hotels that are going for grab drive also. Uh, we, you, we have not seen that only grab drive for outside food, but hotels are doing this grab also. Even my mm -hmm. hotels are doing that. Because right, we need to keep the staff on tow and let them work. And at, at any other day, they have a decent salary to earn. That's what we want. Okay, thank you, Mr. Lawrence. So, uh, in short, it can be said that uh, some hotels uh, this uh, came up with a plan, uh, which um, a plan for them to like secure the employees in their hotel because of this pandemic. So it doesn't mean that they can just simply like do some retrenchments uh, towards the workers. Uh, okay, so uh, maybe I would like to ask Mr. Lukman on in terms of a uh, travel agency perspective. Uh, do you even encounter like this kind of situations as well? I mean, in reducing the numbers of workers, and if let's say that you uh, tend to uh, not to retrench the workers, then what are the plans that you do for for the staff? Uh, 
I think I think uh, now the priority for any employers is actually to, to keep the job. I think mm-hmm. um, given the but of course uh, any employers also will or are experiencing uh, the economic constraints actually in keeping mm-hmm. the job. Of course there are uh, program subsidy upa and all that. But uh, I think like Mr Lawrence has mentioned, we. I'm not sure whether that will continue beyond uh, 2020, right? Because uh, so far we, we, we have seen it uh, extended until uh, to December, right? Mm-hmm. And then uh, I think now for micro enterprise, I think it's more flexible. It, it can be more flexible than the small or medium right? mm-hmm. because of the size of uh, the business. A number of employees that they have, and uh, the seeking uh, what you call this uh, understanding from employees is very much easier compared with the with the larger organizations, comparatively mm-hmm. speaking. I think uh, there are many travel agents who has actually reinvented their businesses also, or actually uh, ventured into new business. Yeah? Uh, there are many. Uh, among the travel agencies who actually venture into uh, delivery, uh, cleaning services, mm-hmm. uh, bakery, <laughs> uh, what you call f- fresh food uh, businesses, and uh, and many others. No? So I think a travel agency has, of course, there, there are some who are actually uh, giving this flexibility while mm-hmm. uh, skin the understanding while we are maintaining them on the so-called uh, payroll but uh, i think the, the the bosses are giving financial help for the employees also to to, to start their own small businesses right and mm-hmm. like i said this is more possible in the smaller organizations mm-hmm. but these are the what what uh, are being done currently i think uh yeah of course the the recent government decision of uh, travel bubble also might help to certain mm-hmm. extent uh, to as a start i think that should be something that uh, we we'll look for as the travel restriction is uh, lifted now but looking at the <coughs> the situations when you have uh, pkpb mm-hmm. uh, and the at the current rate uh, Selangor is doing, I think where the probably the contributors to the travelers, uh, mm-hmm. we can see that probably from the central region is is huge, then it may again limit the prospect of uh, getting the business uh, on the path that we really want. So uh, back to the employees, of course, uh, those who are affected, uh, with retrenchment, there are existing government helps uh, uh, from EIS program of the, if they, they want to actually go <coughs> uh, under uh, uh, re-employment, there are penjana kerjaya and all that. Uh. So I think the, the certain schemes are there, but I think mm-hmm. it's more like surviving at the moment, you know, keeping the employees is actually really, uh, we employees has a very, very limited options and uh, not until like mr lawrence say the, the 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 pandemic has is reduced and the vaccine is found and borders are open travel uh, uh, restrictions are lifted mm-hmm. and then this this is where uh, the, the things got, start going to happen eh? but it's i think it's going to take a very gradual, gradual uh, improvement towards that and as been, I mean, reported, huh? uh, researchers and experts have said that it may recover within the next two years. Yeah. <clears throat> so, it's actually, employers may not have much choice at the moment. Mm-hmm. The flexibility is also limited. But uh, as much as they can, uh, the question is <laughs> how long, you know, how long? It is really, really bad. Yes, uh, of course. Uh, from the training training perspective, uh, there are things that people can enjoy from HRDF. People can enjoy mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. Pukeso and all that. Yeah? So there, there are many from the aspect. 
for employers right. to tap and for employees to actually benefit. Right. Thank you very much, Mr. Lukman. So for I do agree with uh, our panels because uh, uh, based from the uh, supports and funding, I do believe that uh, larger hotels, they may have uh, supports and funding in order to keep their employees by having another plans for uh, in terms of uh, increasing the skills development and personal development of their employees. But where else uh, for the smaller institutions okay, or smaller practitioners, this may be the end until that they, some of them has to close down the hotels itself. And I do have some friends who are working in the industry and then uh, uh, unluckily they have to uh, start find a new job in order to uh, to cater this uh, kind of crucial uh, uh, challenge situations. So uh, aside of the practitioners in the industry, so I do feel that uh, this pandemic as well has affected uh, some of the academic institutions. And then as, as some of the students, they may feel uncertain uh, to pursue the study uh, in the area of hospitality and tourism to be specific. So this uh, will uh, lead to our questions number three. So this, the pandemic will affect the future of students who are currently studying hospitality and tourism programs. And then uh, if let's say the pandemic will be continuous because we don't even know uh, until when it will end, okay, what are the opportunities that they might have to enter the industry? So I think uh, Dr. Johan will be the perfect person to answer these uh, right. particular questions. All right. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Ms. Sabrina, uh, for the question. Yes. All right, the question is uh, I've already uh, shared the some of the PowerPoint. Uh, mm -hmm. Does the pandemic will affect the future of the students who are currently studying a hospitality and tourism program? All right, now we have to look uh, in this. Uh, recently, uh, some of the I think we know uh, the number of uh, the numbers of hospitality and tourism uh, hospitality and tourism student increase uh, from year to year and especially uh, Malaysia is actually a place where hospitality and tourism is uh, among the highest contributor to the economy. All right. So uh, when I look at there are some of the uh, academic institution who basically try to reduce the number of uh, employee, especially the lecturers. And another issue that I would like to bring here is to is about now at the moment, because the majority of uh, our course, uh, our programs is actually hands-on. So uh, mm -hmm. how are we going to bring, say, for example, the kitchen to the students? Now, I would like to address this issue and I hope the the government will, will, will have to take this thing into high consideration where mm -hmm. uh, I have like, say, for example, now at the moment having the online class, right? So to have all this, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the lecture notes and whatsoever, it's okay. But the problem is I have good internet connection uh, in, in the university, but my main concern is about the students that is actually from the rural area. Not, not only rural area, the urban area as well. Yeah, They have problems in terms of uh, internet connection. That is one thing. Uh, internet access, internet bandwidth, and of course, some of them, not some of them, the majority of them is B40. You know that, mm -hmm. the income, you know. So it's uh, when they try to, to be in the class, uh, not even 10 minutes they have to left because of what? Because of the internet connection. So this is the most critical issues if you would like to go on, on this online learning, all right? This is uh, the insights of the academics, yeah? And... The, the first one, the most critical is internet connection, the uh, telecommunication. This is the most important and highly, uh, uh, I mean, need to be taken into consideration by the government. Last time, before we don't have this pandemic, we thought that we are doing very well uh, in terms mm -hmm. of the internet connection. We thought that everyone in Malaysia is okay. Not until the pandemics, because I would like to say that pandemic, they has advantage and disadvantages. Right. Mm -hmm. For the advantage is we know our strength, weaknesses, opportunity, opportunity and threat. This is, has been been like lack like, and nobody not I'm not saying not but nobody, but this thing is taken is seen lightly by by some uh some 
I don't know. I want. I don't want to say the word. Yeah. And uh, when the pandemic hit the country, the whole world, starting from Hubei in China, oh. then we know that we are actually in a very bad, bad condition in terms of our telecommunication. Okay, this is the oh. most critical. And next tomorrow is the. Uh, I would like to comment a bit about the budget that is going to be passed, the supply bill for ne- uh, tomorrow, twenty on the twenty. Sorry, today is 25, 26, yeah? And tomorrow, I think three most critical issues that is actually need to be uh, take, taken into consideration by the government. The first one is, of course, the uh, how are we going to help or assist the, uh, the, 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 the stu- especially the students or the people who basically lost their job. And the second one is you're talking about telecommunication. And I uh, there is like... Uh, When you 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 you, listen, you you watch the television, show the news. Mm-hmm. I I I I from my this is my my personal opinion. I would like to agree. Now I I would like to to say to support that is the extension of moratorium helps or assist the industry because of what the disposable income uh, by the the person who got the moratorium they will spend that into our area because you know uh, in Malaysia. Uh, more the the Malaysian always like to to travel a lot, and they try to they like to go somewhere else because of what? Because if you have a uh, extra extra uh, disposable income or you have mm-hmm. a bit of money, you 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 intend to travel because you put like no, you're saving or whatever. So uh, the three thing is that is one of the most important thing is about the uh, uh, telecommunication. This is the problem, and of course the. Uh, Definitely, of course, we have this uh, uh, EMCO, RMCO. Yeah, mm-hmm. this also prohibit us from from traveling. So, how are you going? And especially the the the, the last one, uh, the suggestion that the ten uh, thousand ringgit for the EPF. Uh, mm-hmm. This is also, uh, I think, uh, will will assist uh, the number of the number of uh, employee who got retrenched uh, or got uh, let off by the company, and they can start so like a small business. Uh, until the economy is good okay i would like to comment as well regarding the uh, regarding the uh, now at the moment there are about 23 companies that is actually developing the covid-19 uh, vaccine so i think two three of two three of them like covax novavax and of course mm-hmm. uh, uh, they are now doing on the clinical uh, pass on the efficacy is about 20 Uh, about 95% uh, of the the clinical the third phase so we hope that as bill gates says that because bill gates invests a lot of money in terms of how to develop the vaccine because he knows that it will in fact uh, affect his business in terms of this this uh, software and computer because you you cannot export your things yeah you cannot export your things so he uh, invests i think some amount big large amount of money and uh, according to him like On his observation by Bill Gates, he said that this uh, major, uh, I mean, vaccine producer will will mm-hmm. will will continue to be produced. Will continue to produce uh, this November 2021. So we hope that this thing is going to be is going to happen. We hope that all these uh, company uh, they, they are doing very very uh, they're doing their their job, and we hope that this vaccine can be produced. Uh, next february until the clinical phase of the uh what 100 100 efficacy so the question back to the question yes the number of hospital reservation is currently downsizing definitely but however yeah we have to remember that uh the uh all over the world especially the uh, pharmaceutical company they are doing uh, uh very uh i mean they are doing a ha, ha, very uh Uh, they try to produce the, the the vaccine as soon as uh, uh, as, pos- as possible, and because some of the countries also got affected by the pandemic COVID 19 especially when I show you the uh, number of uh, people that got infected in the United States, uh, you're talking about millions of people. So every single company is try to 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 produce and try to mm-hmm. to to uh, to to, to uh, make it uh, faster. So airlines, cruises, hotels, food service, yes. But what we can do now, if the pandemic continues, what are the approaches that might, 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 might have to enter the industry? What I can say is about reskilling, yeah, reskilling, uh, 
this is uh, what I call, we call as a tapping the blue ocean strategy. There are during during the, uh, the non pandemic uh, uh, time uh, when we don't have this pandemic, we always always see the red ocean. The red ocean we saw we, we can see that this is the business. This is how we do the business, and however we have forgotten mm -hmm. to see the blue ocean strategy. This is true enough because okay, I give you one example. Uh, I don't. I don't. Know. I'm not promoting the product, but I, I like to to share the the experience of these two company. The first one is mm -hmm. Kuko, and the second one is Koe. All right. Okay. They come. Uh, I'm not promoting it, but this is a very <laughs> good research. Yeah, Kuko. They Kuko. They come to Malaysia. They come to Malaysia and they do some research. They have found that that the majority of water in Malaysia is not up to the standard. Mm -hmm. Therefore, they go back to Korea, Kuwait as well, these two companies, they go back to Korea and they do some like brainstorming and do lots of, uh, lots of discussion. They said, we, can we just produce this product and then we introduce this to Malaysia. And as you see now, the majority of Malaysia, they will have cocoa or Kuwait in the house. And then the second thing is when they come here, they sort out. The, in, mm -hmm. in Southeast Asia, they have a problem with the haze because of uh, some country is burning something and then it will affect uh, Singapore, uh, Malaysia, whatsoever. They go back and they do them research, then they come out with the air purifier. See? So how, how are you going to, 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 to see the opportunity is important. Yeah? We never, we never expect that because they know, as you know, as you know, this, I'm talking about the fact in, 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 in Selangor itself, yeah, you can see every day uh, you what you can see the the pollutions the this thing will never stop because of what i i think uh the entity will have the answer it's not me mm -hmm. but you have the answer so you see when you see the tapping the blue ocean you see when you you you, you observe in your research and uh, research and development you will see this so therefore in the hospitality and tourism itself like the hotel industry the travel agency the uh i mean cruises they need to sit down and take all the brains that they can have i mean uh the 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 researcher whatsoever and sit down and do some brainstorming in that brainstorming how are we going to tap this blue ocean strategy so meaning to say you don't see you have you cannot do business now you cannot do business like you do before like in 2019 and before and 220, 221, 222, like in the next five years, you need to reconfigure your business. All right? Like um, uh, this one, uh, I'd like to, uh, hold on. All right? So the COVID-19 pandemic has altered the way we plan, how we plan, how we plan, lead, manage, organize, and coordinate and execute our business and work. How do we reflect on response to the, to the circumstances is crucial and it's heavily relied on various research and development. So, as we, we can see now, so what is going to happen to the students? What is going to happen to the uh, students who are currently studying? We have tons and millions, billions of opportunity to do because COVID-19 is just like, still remember back in 1920, we have this uh, Spanish flu Things have happened before, happened before, mm -hmm. and we managed to 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 rise again. And the next one is product and service enhancement, learning new knowledge, big data analysis. Now, this is important for us to uh, to have the, the the knowledge of how to analyze data. Yeah, to have the analyze data and artificial intelligence, blockchain, and research and development. So, we have to. Like say, for example, the, the institution, the industry, and the student, you, you, the, we have to sit together and look in detail what is going to happen. And we need to do some in-depth brainstorming or sit like one week, two weeks with all these brains and come up with a good solution. If you say that it's going to affect, I'm very positive that we are going to make to this uh, uh, pandemic. It's just a temporary Temporary and people are doing around the world is doing their best to mm -hmm. to to eliminate this 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 virus and I think we are going to survive positively but it's just only time and uh, yeah it's only time I think that's my my comment on 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 this uh, third question. Thank okay, you. Thank you Mr. very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Johan. So 
I totally agree with what uh, has been shared by Dr. Johan. So it, this is not the end. So there, it, this will affect the uh, situations of current uh, uh, industry. But then uh, let's say if that the pandemic will be over, so our industry will be booming again. So by that time, definitely we still need a huge number of manpower in our industry. So uh, as for me, I think that uh, this uh, will be a good opportunity for the students to still pursuing the study in our industry. And uh, I as well did agree with uh, what Dr. Johan have said that uh, in terms of reskilling. So by the time that uh, maybe currently is not a very good uh, time for us to be in the industry, but then uh, look into the bright side. It was a very good time for students to take this opportunity to reskilling. So reskilling can be uh, in terms of a lot of different elements, okay, especially uh, maybe communication skills. So communication is very, very important in our industry. So uh, even though we have this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, this is not the end for hospitality and tourism industry. Okay, so um, as for now, we are moving to the CMCO and also our MCO phase. So uh, most of the business, they would think about the recovery process. So uh, in terms of the practitioners, what are the key actions and considerations that uh, the tourism suppliers like hoteliers and travel agencies uh, can make to support a very successful recovery? So maybe we can hear some insights from Mr. Lawrence. How about uh, the perspective from uh, hoteliers on the reco recovery process? news in the star that the state government is waiving the hotel fees three ringgit three ringgit to two ringgit for four star and five star and you know three star hotel so that is uh, they, they they extended it until december but today's uh ybo said he'll extend it until next year march mm -hmm. or june this is one of the things to attract the the local you know domestic uh tourists to move and another thing as i said uh, the packages uh, you, we need to make it very attractive whereby you know you, uh, you to, to to bring the locals in because why you know sometimes the package need to be very attractive and competitive whereby it's affordable right we, we definitely urge hoteliers not to look only on foreign markets look at the local mm -hmm. market right? look at the local people right so make it affordable whereby they also can come and enjoy you know uh, the hospitality right and uh, just to touch about Dr. Johan said, uh, it's a very positive uh, note doc you gave. Uh, by next year, February, the vaccine will be here. To me, it gives me a confidence, a morale boost. Ah, mm -hmm. there's a light button, right? Yes, correct. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm dumb on that. Exactly. Uh, of course, uh, Mr. Lokman said, the business will gradually pick up. Mm -hmm. It is good when gradually pick up. And that means we are gradually, we are getting ourselves ready. You see, the, the, the COVID is, is, a, is a chain effect, not alone hotel, okay? Everybody, tourism, you know, the studies, you know, the economic. So it all brings back to one table, how we want to sit down and bring fight this back to bring the uh, revenue from Malaysia, right? Because uh, tourism revenue, it is a, a top contributor also, right? So this is where we need to sit down and address these issues all. But as I said, uh, the government is addressing the issue. But we can't depend alone only on government. We should, you know, initiate ourselves. So for students down there, okay, as, as what doctor said, uh, there, there is a light uh, progress will be happening uh, in, in your know, tourism. So do not give up on the studies, right? Because why? this is the time, even for me also, or for my staff also, all right? This is the time for you. You can start your studies back, okay, enhance back. So when the business picks up, we are ready. By the time when the business picks up, you are too busy to go for your books. So now is the time, go for your books back. So this one, I encourage my training manager also, to drive all my associates. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Lawrence. All right, so uh, we do believe that every practitioner, they have their own uh, recovery process. So maybe we can ask uh, Mr. Lokman, 
do you have any actions or plans in uh, for your travel agencies okay specifically uh, about this uh, recovery process to facing uh, this uh, pandemic covid-19 Uh, thank you, Chair Sabrina. <clears throat> I think one, one of the areas that uh, I'm looking at is actually, and we are already part of it, is actually going digital. Yeah, And uh, I think uh, there are, and the associations like Mata and other associations are having their own digital platform to sell. And uh, there are also independent um, uh, digital uh, portal, yeah? portals which are actually inviting travel agents and uh, product owners to actually post uh, to host their their uh, services there and also uh, i think the government through mdec is also giving the matching grant uh, for for this uh, what you call uh, smes to go digital at the moment eh? so these are one of the important uh, steps uh, I think travel agencies are like like us are doing, and also uh, at this this is the time when we learn about managing the crisis, uh, about safe travel. So these are the things that uh, will be carried forward as we move into the business post pandemic. I think um, the COVID nineteen pandemic does not. Of course, it poses a lot of challenges, but at the same time, give us a lot of opportunities to learn, uh, to learn and to actually prepare for the future. Yeah, and uh, of course, in that process, it's, it's actually a very, very painful process. You see people go from the organization, you see business being closed, and they are more going to to close, and because some are really uh, just not able to to do other type of maneuvering during this time and they just mm -hmm. may have the, made a decision to just close and it, it affects their employees. So I think uh, digital is one. Number two is actually uh, looking at how collaboration can happen within the industry. Mm -hmm. I think there are uh, many platforms available uh, like to MPC, Malaysia Productivity uh, Corporation, and also they, they are organizing a lot of uh, engagement sessions. Uh, also, I think from uh, the ministry, there are many sessions that is being conducted. I think we just need to participate and actually giving the inputs, uh, the, the help, the kind of support or help for businesses in the industries probably come in stages also, <laughs> like I said, for travel agencies, uh, the direct assistant, I mean, even the latest one, we have still not seen how uh, we can benefit directly, you know, from the latest uh, announcements. But uh, we have seen it, hotel may be getting it, uh, some, mm -hmm. uh, some uh, airlines, uh, craft products, but uh, not yet, uh, I think the transporters, I think um, indirectly we may, but we must be re must remember travel agents officially. Yeah? If you look at MATA members, there are about 3,000 travel agencies. Uh, and you, have, you also have uh, other agencies who are not registered with MATA, but with other agencies. Uh, of course, I think easily there are more than 3,000 over uh, registered and active travel agencies in Malaysia. And of course, we talk about site operators, product, uh, tourism products, yeah? all mm -hmm. are suffering at the moment. And with the, I think everybody is doing something uh, to, 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 to sustain or to, to survive. I think the key word for 2020, <laughs> we are not talking about growth, you know, we are talking about survival, right? And then um, how to keep, uh, the, the 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 best numbers of employees we can we can have right and what can we do with with them at the moment i think these are where like i mentioned earlier travel engineers have ventured into new other business for us we we are actually moving uh, teams to support our <coughs> our training but again when it comes to 
training events, uh, there are certain limitations also currently with uh, CMCO. Uh, mm-hmm. When when we do things online, so, so there are actually a very lim- limited uh, number of things that our employees whom we move from the travel business to the training business like us. Huh? So we are able to do this if we are in recovery mode, right? Uh, the, the team building can happen, we can do it at a hotel, mm-hmm. we can do it at other location, but during um, CMCO, we, we are not able to do that. So online is the thing, and when it's restricted, again, the kind of work that can be done by our team members is again very limited. So there are a lot of administrative uh, uh, building the engagement uh, with the prospects or the current database that we have that we are doing now. So actually getting ready for a better times, things get improved, uh, we are ready from the digital standpoint, from the engagement that we have with our current uh, current client or the prospective clients. I think that that's uh, more or less uh, I can speak on my business in <laughs> travel <laughs> agency. Yes. But uh, I think again, uh, we talk about um, experience right travel or tourism is mm-hmm. about experiencing of course we can say that um, uh, you can travel virtually of course there are mm-hmm. virtual products at the moment but uh, if that, that if we talk about would you want to pay for something to actually experience it virtually mm-hmm. even for let's say 25 ringgit for one hour virtual session so this is the thing that we have to <laughs> ask ourselves whether we want to do now. So the 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 this is new, and uh, people are still um, okay. Should I spend or not spend on virtual tour? Or you know, it's the right price for me to pay for a virtual tour. So so these are things that is going to be probably uh, uh, not yet tested. I would say people, things are being developed. There are organizations. Uh, travel agents are developing virtual tours. Uh, mm-hmm. We know they are uploading their products in their portal. Uh, you can check in local local, for example. They they are they are good at that. Uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, experience can be anything. Again, if you talk, talk about students, I think new intakes uh, should be okay because they are graduating mm-hmm. next, right? But those who are actually great graduating. Uh, this year, I think there's a lot of uh, opportunities to learn from mm-hmm. others, yeah? uh, to continue to learn and uh, be open enough to actually accept. If any of students are viewing this, uh, do not get discouraged by the current state of the economy affecting the tourism industry because good time will definitely come back yeah? because tourism has been uh, what you call uh, a strong contributor to the economy. Mm-hmm. When this get back on track, it's going to actually repeat that performance or even better. So, uh, I never think that you are in the wrong, you have taken the wrong course <laughs> of a wrong diploma, wrong degree. Yes. It's just a temporary. So, so many things that if you uh, you are upon graduation, you, you can do, you know, uh, just uh, be willing to do, okay? That's my advice lah, to, to students who are actually watching our session today. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Lokman. Uh, in the meantime, so for the viewers, if you have any questions that you would like to ask our panelists, you can start to drop your questions in the chat box. Okay. And uh, last but not least, uh, I would like to ask uh, insights from our academicians' perspective. So, Dr. Johan, uh, do you have uh, any opinions on the recovery process for most of the businesses? All right. Uh, firstly, uh, I would like to address two issues here. The first one is about supply. And mm-hmm. the second one is about demand. All right. Now, the supply that we have is actually stopped. At the moment, not say stop, but slowly uh, picking, up, picking up business. And the demand. Mm-hmm. Okay, now, the demand is the customer that we have, the uh, people who basically visit hotels, yeah, uh, traveling. You, uh, I still remember when we, after we, we, we the first phase of uh, MCO, and then we have the second phase of uh, MCO, EMCO, I think, I think, the PKPB, 
And then the third one, we have the uh, re-RMCO. During RMCO, you know what? What happened? Uh, since that uh, the moratorium is still on, you know what? I've been to Langkawi twice. Uh, I've been to KK Marriott, uh, to KL. You know, we 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 have the the uh, the the demand is there, and then you have the uh, possible income. So during that RMCO, I travel like like I stay uh, in the five star hotel. Like last time, it is very. It's, it, it is uh, it's not easy for you to go because you know the price of five stars like Marriott and whatsoever is quite expensive. But the they have uh, uh, I mean a man or they have uh, uh, studied the, the the price and they, they reduce the price into such uh, like two hundred fifty to one hundred eighty whatsoever. Mm-hmm. So the main drive for the next recovery is the domestic tourism. I mean the domestic, the even China. I I have the reports from the uh, from the uh, uh, Mr. Huzarazi. He, he just, just sent me just now, and he was talking about the Asia Pacific economic region about in terms of uh, uh, pandemic COVID 19 And I do not know whether I can share you uh, the the report, but later on, if you you need the report, I'll give you. And my main concern now is how are we going to to give confidence to the. Uh, Visitors, or I mean, I mean, I mean, the domestic tourists, tourists to to go abroad, and at the same time we have all these restriction like PKPB, uh, we have like uh, extended MCO, mm-hmm. uh, and then we have uh, uh, recovery. So at the moment, until 6 of December, uh, everyone is waiting for whether the curve or can be flattened or not. And since like yesterday, we 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 have seen the number of about two thousand uh, numbers of COVID uh, people who got infected by the COVID nineteen. And uh, on the sixth of December is we are looking forward to to flatten the curve. As you know, you can see the uh, the curve in in Sabah is already going down. They only uh, they have registered about two hundred and two hundred plus uh, cases. So this is the place where basically got the highest numbers of and. As you know, like Sabah and Sarawak, this is the place that uh, the majority of the I'm, I would like to say that Sabah and Sarawak, their main contributor to the income is hospitality and tourism, the hotels, the uh, the the I mean the mountains, the 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 beach, and of course the island that we have in in Sepadan, one of the uh, one of the most beautiful island in the world. So slowly, I mean, if we can flatten the curve. We we uh, we everyone we try to, to flatten the curve and we have uh, we try to to make sure that everyone confidence to travel. This is one of the most important thing. Travel confidence to travel. If you can see now, if people go to the bank whatsoever, they have to do the mice jatra and they feel mm-hmm. like this is a, like like a, a barrier because last time we don't you don't have to do that. You can travel safely. You can travel happily to KK to Sabah uh, to Sarawak and and. Abroad as well to Thailand, to Indonesia, Bali. Right. Yeah. At the moment, I have friends actually uh, listening to this, and uh, I think he he will. I, I have friends actually in this uh, forum that is from mm-hmm. Bali, and of course I have from Indonesia, I have from Kalimantan, and I hope that my the professor Dr. Barry Omani is the dean of the before this call hotel hotelier is is listening, and he might be giving some insight, maybe question to us. I think that is my opinion, uh, Miss Sabrina. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much, Dr. Johan. So uh, we can say that uh, most of the business, of course, they are planning on the recovery process. So like uh, what uh, have been shared by Mr. Lukman, for most travel agencies, they do have this uh, using the digital pre- platform like uh, virtual tours and so on. Right. So I think uh, this is also a good time during the recovery process for the business to really like uh, integrating the usage of technologies in the business in order to uh, enhance the experience of the travelers in, in the next term. Okay, so I think thank you very much for Paris for their sharings on our questions. So now we have a little more time to answer the questions from our viewers. So maybe uh, let's see uh, some questions uh, from our viewers.
are here to actually provide all the support to develop students to become a competent graduate that is needed by the industry. Please feel welcome to visit us to see how we do our transformation of students. Hey, so we are back from our short break. So now it's time for panels to answer your questions. So maybe we can have a few questions from the viewers. Okay, so we have a question from uh, GM IPVS. So, aside from Pinjana and Pinjana 2, has the Malaysian government, especially the Ministry of Tourism, worked out on grants or funds that are specific to the tourism and hospitality industry? Uh, so, maybe we can have uh, Mr. Lokman answer the question since uh, he is the one that uh, being in the industry. Okay, I think um, there, there has been there has been I think whatever funding from the government would come under official uh, initiative like Penjana or Penjana Two. Aside from there, we, we have to look at the, what is provided for under the what you call this uh, um, budget two thousand twenty one, uh -huh. right? So <laughs> what you call this? Uh, I mean, the, the answer is yes. Uh, fund as available, like I mentioned earlier in the discussion, uh, it, it may cannot be dispersed and that uh, expected by the players in the tourism industry. All right, Even thank now, you, yes. Mr. Lohman. Yeah. Yes. So I hope that uh, Mr. Lohman answers can have fully answers the questions from GMIPVS. Okay, so now let's uh, move on to our second questions. Okay, it's for, from Miss Nor Fadliah Pesol. So how uh, we can encourage domestic tourism for virtual tours? So like uh, for international scenes, it's being used now. And then I uh, need to discuss more on virtual tour marketing for domestic scenes. I think this as well, uh, Mr. Lokman may answer these questions related with virtual tours. I think uh, the, the, I think we want to talk about um, the the who are, first let, let let's ask who who are actually in the virtual tours, uh, mm -hmm. which are the platform that is providing now. I think like I did mention a while ago, uh, local local platform is one that probably leading the virtual tours. Uh, uh, and number two, uh, are the public aware such virtual tours exist, right? And uh, actually, what is virtual? I think a lot of um, actually promotions eh? and to, to get to the message that virtual tours are available. Uh, I think the awareness, number two, get people to actually get the hang of the virtual tours, get people to go through for sessions of virtual tours to certain mm -hmm. attractions. Then people start to actually appreciate, uh, oh, virtual tour is, although, uh, we may not be actually experienced hands-on physically, but it gives a certain feel, you know, to be part of the experience or to mm -hmm. get acclimatized with the certain uh, tourism attraction, for example. So number one is actually, uh, there must be uh, actually players who actually develop this. I think now it's still very limited. And uh, under Malaysia Productivity Corporation, I think there are initiatives being carried out on virtual tours. Uh, anyone can actually develop virtual tours and get it posted and actually get it paid as well. Get paid as well. Uh, and of course, you can provide that content uh, by working on portal providers. Uh, so you have probably need to, to, to approach uh, companies like uh, local local yeah? and they, they are actually uh, focusing on local experiences 
And uh, <coughs> number two, yes, uh, people need to be aware. And number three, people need first to experience it. And number three, people we need to mm -hmm. uh, be willing to pay for it. You know? So this is the, the, the stages as in the normal tours. You know, people are paying to go for the normal physical tours. So the challenge is to, to get the acceptance uh, from the market. Huh? But your tours is, uh, to a certain extent, a good replacement for uh, the normal tours that we have. I mean, it's not a 100% substitute, but it actually can actually satisfy a certain part of the uh, tourism expectation. I mean, people go for tours for certain reasons. It's a break away from uh, their normal routine. So uh -huh. virtual tour must first satisfy that aspect of uh, uh, experience uh, for the uh, clients. Uh, that's my response to it. Right. Thank you very question. much, Mr. Lokman. Yes. So we know that uh, virtual tours may be still a new thing for our domestic uh, uh, industry. But then, like what uh, has been said by Mr. Lokman, it is it, based from the experience itself. Where, well, some uh, tourists, they may have this uh, very enthusiastic in traveling, so they are willing to go for virtual tour as well. Some of the tourists, they may uh, want to experience, uh, have more experience on, uh, the, like, I mean, the real experience in uh, visiting the places itself. All right, so thank you to Mr. Lokman and also to Miss Fadlia. Right, uh, let's look on our next questions. Right, so the next question is from Mr. Omar Al Abadi. So he asked that uh, also the borders are scheduled to be lifted by 31st December of 2020. So it seems like that could be extended longer. So what are the consequences that the industry will face? Uh, maybe I would like to have Mr. Lawrence to ask, uh, answer these questions. Yeah, but uh, Ms. Omar, this is the schedule uh, the government uh, looking to lift it up, right? It may be longer. Uh, personally, I, I, I think it will be longer. It will maybe stretch maybe until next year, March or June, okay? The consequences the industry will face, of course, uh, as, as, as I said earlier, we are looking more for domestic uh, tourists, right? So as long as the border is not open, the foreign tourists would not flow in. And, and, and of course, you know, we can't go out also. So there's been two. So, but much will depend on the mm -hmm. local tourists. So to attract local tourists, the packages will have to come in. Uh, the packages more attractive for the locals, you know, how to uh, uh, win them back. The, 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 the main thing, the locals, locals from uh, compared to now and those days are totally different. Right now, those days, you know, when, when my parents' time, uh, we hardly go to hotel because for, for us, oh, hotel is something. But nowadays, local, even my son, okay, to celebrate a birthday, they go to hotel. You see, it's just exactly. nice, very nice. All right. So, this mm -hmm. man, you know, you can see people are growing, the mindset is growing. So, that's where the industry play, need to you know, accommodate more on that. So, when, you, when I look at COVID, it is more to come back to where we belong, right? To, 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 to go back, to take care of the locals, rather than we're focusing more, you know, moving fast, right? This is for the check and balance for us. All right, thank you, Mr. Lawrence. Uh, so it means that even though uh, we are not sure about the future, it can be extended some more or longer, but then uh, still the business will, will go as usual. Uh, we leave uh, their recovery plans from the prospective business. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Omar, on the questions. And then let's move on to our last questions, I guess. Okay, so the question is from Ms. Hilary Hugh. So does the pandemic COVID-19 change the pattern of travelers and tourism industry? Because after the COVID-19 pandemic, people more worried about their health and safety, especially this particular area that considered as an epidemic center of outbreak. So uh, maybe we can have Dr. Johan to share his opinion on these questions. All right. Thank, thank you for, for the question. Uh, does the pandemic COVID-19 change the pattern of travelers and mm -hmm. tourism industry because of the COVID-19 COVID pandemic people more worried about their health and safety? Okay, now, so the main question that we would like to address here is how are we going to gain the confidence of the 
uh, tourists. I mean, the domestic in, or whether international or domestic uh, tourists. And uh, for the first question just now, uh, I would like to 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 uh, like share uh, a bit about the. Um, I, I do not know whether I can share the the screen here. Uh, I'm talking. We are talking about how uh, Germany, how Germany, yep, how Germany experienced. Uh, Germany um, spent about 750 billion euro. It's equivalent to 868 billion US dollar. Yeah, this is for them to uh, aid package that sort to prevent, yeah, to prevent uh, insolvencies, mass layoffs, and rise in poverty. Okay, now back to our discussion. We are talking about the. Uh, we are talking about how are we going to. Uh, I mean. This uh, after the pandemic, what about okay now the to gain the confidence? Okay, of course, any crisis they will have like the up the 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 of course the the curve. I think most of you know about the curve, mm -hmm. yeah. When they end the stage and then the decline stage, and definitely every uh, single uh, crisis will have the. I mean the curve from the beginning, yeah, the growth, the the the, the top, and then of course the decline. So, uh, as for my opinion here, yeah, uh, say for example, uh, I've done the COVID test nine, uh, COVID test nineteen swab test, yeah, and I've also been uh, I do, I've done the the RTK antigen, yeah. So, mm -hmm. uh, the RTK antigen, uh, what what I've read from the uh, from the journals, from the uh, medical journals, it's about the efficacy about RTK is about 85 percent it's not only not not 90 percent the swap test is more like 90 percent so i i do not know whether i'm not i'm not a doctor i'm a doctor but i'm not a medical doctor but from my research uh i found that this RTK antigen uh result can be basically you can get the result less than like 30, 15 to 30 minutes yeah so uh, i do not know whether this is this thing works when if we can have like uh but the the, the test is quite uh, i mean about 250 to 300 ringgit and i don't know whether we can use the strategy how are we going if we try to we, we like to to encourage people to travel uh between state and state maybe they can i, I do not know this is just my comment uh the rtk antigen that can get result as 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 you can like get the exit like 30 to 15 to 30 minutes. I've, I've done the, the test before. Uh, when I uh, went, I went to to Sabah to 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 go for uh, casting my vote. Yeah. So I, I do not know whether this thing can basically get con, uh, can get uh, confidence to the uh, travelers. Uh, so confidence the to give the confidence to the to the travelers is one of the most important thing. How uh, uh, like you you can we can read from the three initiative by the. Um, the one of the initiative by the Ministry of Tourism is to get to give confidence to the traveler, yeah. And of course, they try to enliven the uh, enliven the the industry and as well as try to diversify the product. So, health and talk, talking about, uh, I would like to stress about the how are we going to get the confidence? Uh, how how are we going to uh, promote the uh, I mean the um, uh, confidence among uh, travelers or tourists, uh, domestic tourists, and of course the international tourists. Yeah, I think that's my comment on that. All right, thank you very much. Uh, questions from Miss Hillary. So uh, I do have my own questions, which I would like to ask. Uh, opinions from Dr. Johan. So uh, mm -hmm. earlier, when you mentioned about uh, things that are going online. Okay, so like uh, for classes. So I believe that we also have our fellow educators who are currently watching our session today. So do you think that uh, teaching online or having online classes is quite challenging because what you have mentioned earlier is that uh, our area of study is much more towards practicals. Okay, like I believe culinaries, they have to be in kitchens most of the, 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 the time. Okay, and then uh, as like maybe students who are studying in tourism or even event management. So I see that currently everything mm -hmm. was go online. So we cannot have that experience on letting our students to really conduct that 
uh, particular events in uh, real life. As for me, it was uh, quite challenging because I do feel that uh, students may be lacking in terms of the personal uh, real life experience. So what is your opinion on this, Doctor? Okay, now, thank you for the question, uh, Ms. Sabrina. First, I would like to stress on uh, the challenge uh, for teaching and learning. Uh, since last semester, uh, this semester, uh, we have uh, because because uh, we we normally have our class in front uh, face to face yeah so uh, I can say we have difficulties in try to to adjust ourselves to be in online that is yes, one definitely. first one because normally you will speak in front of the students and mm -hmm. then you give your your lecture you share your knowledge in front of the students so it's like face to face especially for the kitchen for the kitchen for the front office for the housekeeping of course you need to show them because they they don't have the bed that we have the in you know, housekeeping exactly and of yes, course the correct. fmb fmb course uh, fmb service you they, mm -hmm. they, you you need to to perform the 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 serving i mean you have to do the glasses the the plates yeah so when you do it virtually we do not know whether they were uh, 100 get what we we, we, we what we have taught yeah right. because they the the way we teach in the hospitality tourism we need to teach them they need to perform it yeah they yes, need correct. to perform exactly. the job mm -hmm. the, the the class then they can uh understand if you just show them in the in in the in the uh website or you show them the video it mm -hmm. does not work it doesn't work yeah to to to, to teach a culinary student by using a website is not I, I don't I don't I don't agree because you need to have the person the person who teach you the the cooking yeah? I mean to show you the the method of cooking whatsoever you it's not a theory it's you need to perform it 100% you have to perform it it doesn't work if you have online you show them how to cook but they don't have the utensils you just have the utensils yes. so this the process of learning is not 100% delivered I think it's only what 10 to 25% like less mm -hmm. than 25% yeah so this is uh, something that uh, is uh, we have to take into consideration and definitely of course the tourism student they need they, they need to go somewhere else they need to go to to other places uh they need to to do to to experience the travel and then they explain to the to the customer yeah and for the food service students they need to do uh, lots of experimentation they, they cannot do experiment in their house or because they don't have the utensils only the university has it like for example I, uh, in uitm we have the lab for food service where they do all these uh uh tests for 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 nutrition carbohydrate whatsoever they, they have mm -hmm. this, all, all these science utensils yeah they don't have it at home so you, if you try to deliver yes. just like this and one of the most important thing is about the student psychology yeah uh they are most uh, affected by the uh online class because as i mentioned before uh the majority i do not know about the uh, private university but uh, for uitm and of course the other public university uh the majority of the student is uh, b40 b40 meaning to say mm -hmm. that they're earning less so they need to use the the, the uh, device the computer and they have the chill they have their their their, their siblings as well like uh, the brother and sister would like to use the device and as well the internet connection this is i like to stress the internet connection is very bad especially in the rural area i would like to stress it once again so we have to this is the most critical uh, issues that we are facing right now exactly. it is when yes. when someone have to climb the tree yeah recently mm -hmm. you can read yeah they, they, they go and climb the rambutan tree and uh, vevona in sabah and sarawak this is this is not a fantasy this is a real story yeah mm -hmm. so this thing has to be taken into consideration high consideration because this is the main issues we have all the facilities but the student does not have it takes two to tango yeah remember all it right. takes two to tango you just dance but they don't dance so it doesn't work mm -hmm. so uh, the challenge this, these are the challenge especially like i mentioned before the kitchen the uh, uh, uh the practical classes and definitely for us to just uh, online it doesn't work i i i frankly speaking yeah this is from the bottom of my heart i have problem uh talking to them even though i'm teaching research methodology yeah and 
Uh, another thing is uh, when the student they try to like especially the final year student when they they have to prepare their thesis. I think uh, Miss Sabrina, you have done your thesis before, right? Yes. I mean, you you have you have to download lots of journals, right? Mm -hmm, you know what? Correct. To download journals, if you use the university, you can get it free, and the internet mm -hmm. is very fast. But if you at home, exactly. it is impossible because if try to 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 download one journal using that your 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 phone data it doesn't work mm -hmm. it will finish right away like you have 50 ringgit like one journal is more like 50 ringgit uh, data so this is the challenge yeah uh, by uh, many of the institution not only private and public we know like i like to mention segi uh, private university uh, segi uh, msu telus university especially telus university they have lots of international students and of course uh, uum uh, uitm uh, uh, unishams and all these private and public university we have the same problem i think i do mm -hmm. not know about but uh, segi but this is what actually we've been facing by uh, uh, i mean the university public and private uh, last uh, before i i i i, I uh, before this, uh, I was the head of academic center. I have received many, uh, like, it's just like, not the complaint, it's just like the, to express their, their opinion, such that how are we going exactly. to learn if we are at home? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So last semester is the most uh, challenging because we just try to just to to be, uh, we try to, of course, you, you don't know whether your computer is working, you don't know mm -hmm. what is StreamYard, you do not know what is Facebook, you do not know what is WebEx, you do not, do not know what is uh, uh, MSN online. So now mm -hmm. people start. And I would like to advise the student now at the moment, this is the time for you. Still remember back in 1998, 1999, the recession. Yeah. This is the time when lots of students, they go and continue their study. So if you say that the study is not, uh, this is the, uh, you cannot proceed with study. This is the best time for you to, like I said, you try to enrich, to reskill yourself in order for you to be in the next 2021, 2022. So the best way is now is to equip yourself with knowledge. Yeah, this is the main issue that you need to remember for the students, the academician as well, the academician as well. This is the time for you. Yeah, do not wait until what? So this is the time for you. Like Mr. Lawrence mentioned just now, uh, he has the staff to basically ask for, for to continue study. This is the best time for you to continue study. Mm -hmm. Try to keep yourself with knowledge. Everyone, academician as well. Yeah. So you don't you don't waste your time uh, 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 to 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 uh, about this this pandemic. But you have to be proactive. How are you going to give yourself uh, value added to yourself? Not only in terms of you enough with masters, but you need to have a PhD. Yeah, it's a journey. It's a journey. When you have a PhD, this is where you involve with lots of research and development. Then innovation will come and produce a lots of uh, publication to to ever to to the to the ministry, to the government, and helps the government to uh, to enhance or to to develop the economy as well. I think that's my comment, uh, Miss Sabrina. Hey, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Johan. So I believe that we facing the same uh, issue and challenge because our main concern is that uh, will our products from this particular university is, is either public or private uh, will have that that uh, particular knowledge and experience so uh, hopefully that uh, this uh, situation will be ended soon so that we can have our classes back to normal Okay. I'm, so, I'm very uh, positive, uh, Miss Miss uh, Miss Sabrina. Yes, doctor. I'm very yeah. po I'm very positive. I'm very po positive that yes. the pandemic is going to decline, but yeah. we do not know. But we hope, when? like I mentioned, <laughs> I, like I mentioned before, mm -hmm. uh, one of the public figure that is actually invested billions of dollars on mm -hmm. how, how to develop the the COVID that is Bill Gates. He invested. Mark Zuckerberg also invested. Josh, uh, Joe Bezos, the Amazon owners. Mm -hmm. uh, also, Elon Musk also invested lots of money on how to develop yes. that. And we hope that this billionaire can help the, I mean, the, the world. How to, uh, are we going to develop the vaccine? Mm -hmm. So the vaccine, mm -hmm. when we got the vaccine and then the uh, routine that daily routine that we, we we have experienced before can exist yeah yes and exactly. the next for the next so we hope for the best stay positive please do not feel negative about this it is a positive there are uh, 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 i would like to say it in malay ada hikmah di sebalik satu ada hikmah di sebalik satu musibah that is the uh, promise yeah that's a promise yes. there will be advantage uh, advantage uh, mm -hmm. beside all this musibah yeah, 
I am very positive about that. So thank yes. you. That's, that's my comment. Yeah. Thank you, Doctor. So in the meantime, while well, what have been shared by our panels, we can say that uh, in uh, the bright side, looking at the bright side, we can use this particular situation time, pandemic time, to uh, reskill ourselves or uh, to uh, enhance our knowledge and so on in terms of personal developments and also knowledge. So it can be applied to these uh, industry practitioners or even students. So this is, uh, we can see it as the best time for us to prepare ourselves by reskilling. And then by the time everything was end, the COVID uh, pandemic was end, the industry will be back again, uh, will be boost up again. So we are ready to face uh, that uh, particular situation. Okay, so uh, as for conclusions, so it is denoted that uh, our pandemic was hugely and adversely impacted Malaysia tourism industry. So especially after the government have uh, imposing travel restrictions and bans. Okay, how, uh, however, we believe that uh, the industry uh, will be rebound. Okay, as there is inter uh, interventions of governments in uh, resetting uh, the more proper tourism policies in order to assist uh, the tourism industry in uh, sustaining through uh, the challenging periods uh, and beyond. So uh, we do have uh, positive views on this. So we believe that uh, our uh, industries will be rebound back. Okay, so uh, I think that's uh, the end of our sessions. So for our viewers, uh, don't forget to register. Okay, in the links below in order for you to uh, claim your e-certificate, uh, okay, it will be emailed to you. So please uh, take some time to uh, fill in the particular part, your particulars in the form given. Okay, and then a uh, set of that, okay, while you fill up your particulars, I would like to give out my very uh, thank and uh, honour to have our Panelists, okay, so thank you very much for spending uh, your valuable time with us uh, for Dr. Johan, Mr. Lokman, and as well as Mr. Lawrence. Then uh, as well, thank you very much for the participations uh, from our viewers into this webinar. And uh, we hope that uh, we can see you again next time. So maybe uh, with a different topics, okay. So it's, uh, it's just a, a sharing with what happens and what are the experts uh, thinking and their insights for our industry as well? Okay, so uh, till then, uh, thank you very much. <laughs>